Welcome to Hangar Talk, a video series of flying tips, comments, and anecdotes that promote airmanship, the artistry of flying with stick and rudder. Welcome to this edition of Key Points training video titled Rudder Coordination. During this video, we will look at coordinated flight from the pilot's perspective in the cockpit and highlight the key points of stick and rudder skills. You will learn flight maneuvers that will illustrate those key points and help you develop those skills. An airplane's rudder controls rotation on the vertical axis. We call that yaw. When properly trimmed, an airplane wants to fly straight and level. The airplane will maintain a constant flight path without yaw until the airplane is acted upon by a force. There are three forces that cause an airplane to yaw. Adverse yaw, P-factor, and the gyroscopic effect. Let's look at yaw caused by each of these three forces and see how proper use of rudder can control yaw. Adverse yaw is caused by aileron deflection. When you use aileron, you must use rudder. Roll an airplane to the left without rudder and the nose will swing up and to the right. Here we go. I will bank to the left, I use left rudder, the nose will stay on point, the ball centered, the roll will be coordinated. The Dutch roll is an adverse yaw exercise. It is a not-so-simple wing rock. A proper sight picture is required to do the Dutch roll. I use blue tape on the windscreen center post to use as a sight. Viewing from my position in the airplane, I keep the tape aligned with an object on the horizon, the main head, heading, and level attitude. Dutch roll looks like this. Remember, whenever the ailerons are deflected, the airplane requires rudder in the same direction to control adverse yaw. Heavy duty rudder is required when initiating the roll with decreasing rudder pressure as we complete the roll. Try to keep the ball centered when doing this maneuver. Do not pause between your rolls. If your Dutch roll looks like this, your stick and rudder are not coordinated. At the advanced level, I like to do Dutch rolls with a pause. This is a cross-controlling exercise. It is much more difficult. the Dutch roll. This maneuver will develop the habit of using rudder every time you use aileron. The ascending and descending blades of a propeller have differing angles of attack. Therefore, thrust created by each blade differs and turns the airplane on its vertical axis. That force is called P-factor. Without right rudder, an airplane turns left during a climb. Watch as I set a climbing line. Note the horizon moving from left to right. That's without using correcting right rudder. Many pilots do 
not realize that during a power on descent, P factor is turning their airplane to the right. Watch airplanes on final and you will observe frequent banking in and out of shallow turns to correct heading and runway alignment. A good stick and rudder pilot would maintain runway alignment using the rudder to control P factor yaw. Watch as I set up on a power descent. Without rudder, you see the airplane start to move to the right. Using left rudder, I bring back alignment and hold the heading. Release the rudder and you see the airplane begin to yaw to the right. Again, I apply left rudder to straighten the flight path and hold the line. A spinning propeller is a heavy-duty gyroscope. When you force a change to the gyroscopic plane of rotation, the gyroscope applies a force 90 degrees from the applied force. Pull the nose up and the airplane will yaw to the right. Push the nose down and the airplane yaws to the left. rudder as needed to maintain heading during pushes and pulls. Steep ascending and descending lines are P-factor and gyroscopic control exercises. Let's look at a 45 degree line up without using rudder. Note the nose moves to the right and established on the line, it starts to track back to the left. And I recover back to the strain level. Now this time, let me repeat the maneuver, but using corrective rudder. I will use short left rudder to control the initial gyroscopic effect, but then use right rudder we start controlling the P-factor. And you notice the nose stays right on heading throughout the maneuver. Let me emphasize a cautionary note. I'm demonstrating 45 degree lines in an aerobatic airplane. If you fly these maneuvers in a non-aerobatic airplane, it is important that you consider G-force and maneuvering speed. Use 30 degree up lines and down lines. Keep your air speeds below maximum maneuvering speed when you do these maneuvers in a non-aerobatic airplane. The key points of this video describe the forces that cause an airplane to yaw. They are adverse yaw, P-factor, and gyroscopic effect. Keep your ailerons and rudders coordinated. Use rudder pressure as required to control yaw. You will become a great stick and rudder pilot if you practice Dutch rolls to control adverse yaw. Practice your up and push to down line using rudder to control gyroscopic effect on the pull and subsequent P-factor as you set the line. All this is great fun. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Jim also reminding you, fly high, have fun, and keep the blue on top.